Hi everyone. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Hello, hello. Hi. We can hear you. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> this is very good. Yes. True. Uh, so we will start. If there is anyone joining us later, he can join. No problem. Um, but we will start with the presentation. So welcome to our first webinar. So we are happy that uh, many of you decided to participate. So first I would like to introdu introduce uh, us who is participating. I'm Anya. Um, I guess uh, most of you know me at least uh, by writing over Telegram. So next to me is uh, Simon. Hello. Uh, I also think most of you know him. He's uh, our um, all, around. all around programmer and designer of uh, most of the things we're doing. Uh, with me is also yes, Simon uh, today and uh, Rook. I think, I think a lot of you know Rook. Uh, not many of you know today. He is a programmer. Um, um, responsible for designing some of the programs. So um, why we wanted to uh, start with these webinars is to share our knowledge, uh, give instructions how to use the programs and also give you opportunity to ask questions. So first uh, um, few rules for the webinar. Um, first we will have a presentation of today's theme and then at the end there will be time for questions. Um, please uh, write questions in the uh, chat. You can write uh, as we speak and we will try to answer them during the presentation if they're related to the presentation. If not, we will try to answer them at the end. Um, so and one more thing, uh, please mute yourself so we don't have um, interruptions unnecessary. So. I think we should start. So, um, do you see the presentation, everyone? Yes? Okay. So, today's agenda is to uh, present the whole ecosystem and, the, and to present how the modules are interconnected and how the data is sent uh, between the modules and um, uh, to the um, Judah base. Uh, we would also like to present what the system offers to the users uh, in the competitions, viewers at home, and also after the competition is finished, what is offered to our users. So the thinking behind the design of the system was not uh, only how to run the competition in the sport hall, but also how to animate people to follow judo competitions, how to promote judo and how to manage data flow as efficiently as possible. So we believe it is important for um, all who participate in the organization to understand the system and the uh, data flow. So this is the theme for today. Um, and uh, if you will have some questions, we will um, answer at the end. So um, this is the scheme of the system for the World Judo Tour event. Um, we will explain this, uh, you will see this scheme today a few times and we will try to explain everything that is connected in this scheme. Uh, except for the uh, Votava Vision, the scheme can be same for all the continental events. So there are no um, restrictions to any of, of uh, for you to use any of these uh, modules. We will explain every part of this system shortly today. Uh, in the following webinars, we will go into the details about every part of the system. So today is the all over presentation of the system and on the following webinars, we'll go into details. Um, we will also explain what is the final product of all this uh, system and what we are aiming for. 
So first, if I just go back to the slide, first we want to uh, present this. So Judo base, what is Judo base? How it's connected to the other systems? Um, and um, yeah, basically. So Judo base is um, an, an, an administration systems masters where all the data is collected. So sometimes it can be difficult, you know, we use the system Judo base, admin Judo base, uh, Judo manager, admin Judo manager. So we would like to clear this so there is no confusion between what each term means. So uh, Judo base is a, an administration system uh, where all the data for the events in the IGF calendar uh, is, connect, is collected. So in Judo base, now we have uh, competition results from 2009, and for the World Championships and Olympic Games, we entered the data all the way from uh, 1956. So um, we have also the videos from the IGF tours since 2015. And from last year, we also have uh, quite a lot of videos from uh, continental events. So from European continental events and from African continental events. Um, so all events that are in IGF calendar are in judo base. So all the competitors, coaches, other delegations that uh, delegates that participate in the competitions, they're all entered through judo base. So when you select competition and refresh data, you get the data from this system. And when you synchronize um, data online, you send all the data um, to this system. So, um, sorry. So, Judo based administration system uh, and the data that is in the Judo base, you can see in the IGF org site, um, in the uh, on Judo TV, and on the other sites that are connected. Um, and then the next question is, what is the difference between Judo base and admin Judo manager? So Judo base, I already talked about. But we have another database, uh, which is admin judo manager. Okay, uh, this is also the, an administration system, but it is cre created for national federations. So national federations use this system. Um, in judo manager desktop, this is the application that we use for running competitions. You can switch between these two systems. So you use the same desktop application either for judo base or for admin judo manager. Um, as admin judo manager is for national federations, we won't discuss admin judo manager uh, today because uh, this seminar is for uh, judo base use. We just wanted to you know, explain that we have two separate databases. So today we're talking about judo base. Um, there was quite a few um, confu uh, a confusion between, you know, logging in the systems. So here you can see that you have two different ways to log in. You can either log with the um, Judo Manager. For Judo Manager, you need username and password. But you will log as Judo Base. So for Judo Base, you need um, API key and API secret. So where you can switch between these two systems, if you go to settings tab and then advanced settings, you have this rest API setting. And here you can see you can choose either Judo base or um, Judo manager. So, okay. There is another um, uh, um, database that we use which is admin IGF org. So in admin IGF org, we uh, add and select competition managers. So if you, when you're added by admins in this uh, admin IGF 
org. Uh, you get an email with the link to the account where you can get APK and API secret for the event. Only a confirmed competition manager can select the competition and synchronize data. So for example, here you see that uh, there are no competition managers selected. So we add a person here, you're added as competition manager, and then you get email with the uh, link to APK and API secret. And when you enter this APK and API secret, here, then uh, you can um, manage the competition. Then you can uh, synchronize data to the desktop, and then you can manage the competition. So if you are not selected, you cannot manage that. Um, here, this admin IGF we also use to create, uh, to manage time blocks, uh, to create MOOC streams, and also to check videos and um, um, to to check the cut videos online. So this is another um, dat database system. Okay, so back to this uh, scheme. So now I will try to talk about this Judo Manager part. Okay, so uh, this is Judo Manager competition running software. So this is the software for running the competition in the sport hall. So this is the part uh, that uh, a lot of you are managing. So uh, this is, uh, we have a lot of modules for this Judo Manager system. So first one is uh, server. Then we have accreditation module, weighing module, draw animation, scoreboard, packet sender, contest order, display, and coach assistance. So here, you see the setup. So when you get the version of Judo Manager, you can choose which of the modules you will set. Usually, on the main server, you can set all. And on scoreboards, you will just choose a scoreboard model, and you will just put the score, scoreboard model. So this is, um, um, I'm sure, familiar to a lot of you. So <clears throat> another scheme how this uh, Judo Manager system is connected. So first, as I talked, first we have Judo Base, and the data from Judo Base is synchronized to Judo Manager. And I will talk later how you send also the data base back to Judo Base. And this main server is then connected to scoreboards, sends data to scoreboards, and scoreboards send data back to main server. Um, you have also accreditation model and weight module, module, which are not used as much now on the um, IGF uh, competitions. They are more often used in the national competitions. And you have draw animation, coach assistant, and contest order display, which just receive data from the server. They don't set any data back to the server. And here, you see we have packet sender, which I'm sure you're uh, familiar with, and uh, we will try to explain more about uh, the function of packet sender today. So first, um, Judo Manager server. Um, this is how it looks, the main, the, the first page when you enter the program. So this is the main module uh, where you basically manage the competition. So it uh, sends data to all the other modules in the um, network and also services all other Judo Manager modules on the competition. Here, first, here you have the competition settings. So this is where you receive a lot of data. You see this data that is in gray is the ones you cannot uh, change. You have to get the correct data from um, Judo Base. Mm -hmm. And then there are the other settings that you can change. Uh, so here, basically, in competition, you um, set all the settings how you want the competition to be. You now the the draw, the repassage type, the uh, time blocks, and all these um, other settings. Then you have accreditation here, where you manage 
um, accreditation, weigh-in, uh, draw, contest order, referees, results, and now also media for media um, uh, for uh, media accreditation, basically. So there are two main features, main functions that we want to talk about a little bit. So we have synchronization and service. So synchronization and service. Synchronization is this button here. Um, if you have synchronization on, you push and receive data from Judobase. So when the synchronization is on, everything you do in the um, desktop is immediately sent uh, online into Judobase. Of course, you need to have internet connection. If there's no internet connection, then no data will be sent anywhere. So if the synchronization is on, for example, you, you make a draw, you change, uh, you delete an athlete in accreditation, every change will be immediately sent uh, to Judobase. So this must be on during the competition. If it's off, then no data is sent online. Um, in the case of unstable internet, uh, it can happen that some data can remain unsynchronized. So you have an option to go to data and check this unsynchronized data and uh, manually uh, synchronize this data online. If you do any testing like test draw or whatever you want to test, this synchronization must be off. So if you do a test draw and synchronization is on, the draw will be sent online so everyone can see it. And the other is service. Okay, service must be on to send and receive data in the, uh, to the clients in the network. So if you want to send any data to scoreboard, uh, if you want to use draw display, if you want to have contest order display, a service must be on. If it's not, no, no computer in the network will be able to see what's happening uh, in the server. Uh, so it must be on during the competition. Uh, the only time it must be off is when you're creating a backup of the database. Otherwise, the database uh, is corrupted. So this is like um, some explanation of these two functions. And now we're going to what the other modules are. So accreditation module, it um, allows you for two, three, four people to make accreditation at the same time. They have to be connected in the network, and then one person can work in accreditation module, module you know, uh, do accreditation for one country or for one club, and all the data is sent to the main server. So basically, um, it just allows you to perform the accreditation tasks. Um, then we have Wayne module, which is not used in the IGF competitions at the moment. This Wayne module can be connected to the scale. And if it's connected to the scale, uh, you just enter the athlete and uh, his weight goes immediately uh, in the system. So we have the record of everyone's weight. Oh, this is what this module allows you. And then we have draw display. I'm sure everyone has seen this. Uh, you can see it every time there is a draw. So this is just the display of the draw. The draw is made in the server, and this just displays uh, the draw to everyone. So you can uh, put it online, or you can have it locally on the, um, the draw room. Then we have uh, scoreboards. <laughs> Um, you know that uh, you have to put uh, this module on every scoreboard uh, you have in a sport hall. So this is uh, the scoreboard. You can set uh, the settings. So here you set the settings, how you want the scoreboard to behave. Do you want to show uh, white athlete, blue athlete, just both athletes? You want to have a show team and so on. So we have the settings. And here, is a screenshot of the server. Here on server, you will see green if the tummy is connected. Is the scoreboard on the tummy is connected, it's green. If it's not connected, it's red. That means there is no connection to the um, scoreboard from server and vice versa. 
So if you lose connection to the scoreboard or you don't have it, you can see it on the server. Um, then we have a scoreboard display. I'm sure this is very familiar to you. It just displays what's going on on the scoreboard. And um, contest order. So this is also contest order only receives data from server and just displays what's going on. So here you have, uh, um, here in the settings, you have a lot of options. What do you want to, to display just the uh, competitors or so referees? You want to have display for announcers. You want to display past contest, current contest, uh, five contest per match. So, you know, you, you can really play with it what, what you want. Then we have coach assistant. A coach assistant is just a web browser. So you enter in web browser the um, uh, IP address of the server and uh, it will display um, the contest order and uh, coaches can search. Okay, so this was the part about uh, Judo Manager. So now we discussed uh, what is Judo Base, what is uh, Judo Manager, uh, and now we will discuss where this data goes. So we'll talk a little bit about Packet Sender and uh, Judo TV. So um, Judo TV, um, I'm sure you, you have all seen it, watched it. On uh, Judo TV, we show streams, we show contests, results, everything that's going on on the competition for all events that are in judo base. So every event that is in judo base is shown here. So what you can do, you can only show results, um, but uh, the idea is that every competition should have a stream and uh, if it's possible also cut videos online. So here you can see if you have this play button, that means video is uploaded for um, this uh, contest. Okay. Um, so what is important to see event on Judo TV? So it is important that you have correct time block. Because time block is uh, say, um, time block defines if you will be able to see stream and uh, packets online. If Time block, time, time block is wrong, then the stream won't show online because this is how it's designed. Um, so, um, uh, with the Epon org, uh, we needed packet sender to send data online. So, if you were running um, competition with Epon, then you needed packet sender to send the data to the judo base. So this was a necessary thing if we wanted to receive um, data. Uh, but now this Judo Manager, if it has synchronization on, on it will send data to um, Judo Base. So all this data you see here in the contest order is sent directly from the server computer. Um, packet sender sending to API function that is on is to get these active contests on uh, beside the stream. So this is the data from the packet center. And uh, this data that is displayed in the contest order, you see this is contest order, is sent directly from the server computer. So this is uh, like maybe some information about which data gets sent where. So what is the function of packet center in Judo Manager program? Um, so this is how it looks. So uh, here is just an example of what you get from one scoreboard. So this is a scoreboard and here you have, you can see active, sending to API, saving to disk and broadcast. And then you have also ingest packets and scoreboard times. Um, what does Packet Sender do? It sends data to the client. So to graphics, to whatever vision, and to API for tagging, which I will show you later. And uh, saving, saving to disk saves data locally. Uh, what we can do with this data, we can 
basically reconstruct the competition if something goes terribly wrong. Uh, we use it for tagging and for video cutting. So you need to save data to cut videos. There is one more issue thing that is quite important if we want to have correct data is time synchronizations. So all the computers in network must have the same time, zo time zone and time must be synchronized on all computers. If not, um, time of the contest in server can be wrong, videos are not cut correctly, uh, it can affect time blocks, so time blocks are not set correctly, and it's much harder to identify and search for bugs if something happens. So, back to our scheme. So, we talked what is Judo Base, what is Judo Manager, what does Packet Sender do. We showed this data on Judo TV, and now we will talk about this part here Fairy Play. What is Fairy Play, what it, it does, and um, how it's connected to. Um, other programs in the network. So, Simon. Hello. <clears throat> so far, we are talking too fast, or everything is fine with the presentation? Okay, good. Mm, I will move now. All good, thank you. So, Mm, fairy play recorder um, not everybody is using it in the um, application that we sent out there there was a lot of requests of course for the uh, fairy play in the future uh, webinars uh, Anya maybe didn't mention that we will anyhow at the end of the um, webinar collect all of your thoughts you will let us know if uh, something was not clear enough and so on and so forth and of course, the future webinars will be made in such a way that you will get the most knowledge possible. So we really want to share everything with you. We want to teach you everything. Uh, we can also then make smaller groups if you will have, if you need some sort of um, instructions for, I don't know, for one competition, we are available for you. So whatever you will need, whatever won't be clear, let us know, we will help you with everything. So just really shortly, uh, Fairy Play Recorder, um, for the ones who don't know, uh, can, can record multiple sources, can be either SDI, NDI, webcams, really most of the things we support. What's really cool is that um, all of the feeds can be easily shared to the network over the NDI. So for example, you can have one computer to record and to send the streams to um, streaming computer, to OBS, you can just enable um, to output to NDI. So this can reduce the equipment that you need. Um, in general, for all of the competitions, this will be anyhow um, separate webinar, you need really quality cables. Um, for most of the problems that we um, have on the competition can be source of bad network or either video connection. Um, another topic is to have really good connection, like speed is really important, so we really recommend to have at least one gigabit connection. Now for EGU, IGF events, uh, we're experimenting with 10 gigabit connection, so this is much easier for um, viewers to then see the video. Um, one of the important part of the recorder is that it can also share recordings to Qatar and the viewer. So they can either uh, view, um, it will be the next slide, what's happening on the tatami, and to have the cutter. So it automatically cuts the videos and then obviously to upload. Um, what was missing sometimes was the explanation of what scene and angle actually is. And it's very simple. Um, mm, idea of knowing what's actually on the uh, here because we are not that good yet to know what are you recording so with these two simple things in an angle you just do yes this is math number one and what is on the camera is front and this really helps for everything in the later part and then we move for example to the um, viewer it's a really hard name to pronounce, we need to change that, I guess. Mm. What it can do, so it can connect to multiple recorders. Why this is good if you have two, a bit 
not the best computers. You can have two separate recorders. It can record only front cameras and one the rear cameras. We really recommend to have NVIDIA GPU for all of the graphic work that we are doing. So playing multiple videos, you know, outputting videos, overlays and such. Uh, like previous slide, I want to emphasize to have really good network, cables and switches. So we can have very good cables, but then one switch is overheating in some room, this won't really help you with a good um, competition. Um, it has two, two important modes. So the full mode, the one that you see over here, is like free play has, for example. You can do really loads of stuff. But for the judges or referees to see, they can just use the simple mode. Mm, and this means that if you go to full screen, I don't have pictures here now, you will only see this part and they don't need to click anything. They just need to move uh, backwards and forwards and that's it. It supports uh, various consoles. So for, for example, we have um, um, Shuttle Express, we have uh, JL Cooper, you, you, you know, we can go from low to high budget. Um, important thing uh, that's used now in the IGF, EGU competitions and also nationals that it can output to SDI or display and that's really good for the venue replay system. So if you have one big screen, you can just use one another client connected to the network and you can output the full image to the big screen. Uh, and these are the things that I was discussing here. And the referee re replay, you all know it. So whatever happens, they can review and that's basically it. Uh, one very good thing is that you can mark all of the events over here. This will be for a later webinar, but then you can either export them or uh, really um, easily browse through them. Mm. So um, Anya would say that we did this part, we did that part, now we did this part, and now I would like to tell you about this part. That's fair replay together with cutting and uploading. So video cutter, mm, for a video cutter is really important like for all of the other software to have um, time, synch time synchronization on um, and it then can automatically cut the beginning and ending of contest and it can cut of course front cameras, rear, uh, rear cameras, whatever you have there. Uh, it really needs packet sender to get all the information for all the fights, when did they uh, start, when did they finish, and if they did finish. Um, it needs obviously fair replay and it needs to be turned on. It's not enough to just have the fair replay computer on network, the fair replay recorder needs to be on. It's again the same thing with there, uh, fast local network, one gigabit or more, but one gigabit is okay. And obviously it, need, it needs a large drive. What happened this weekend now was that the cutter uh, just um, didn't have enough space and then weird things can happen. We will add alert, but just a good rule of thumb, one contest of both sides takes around one gigabyte. And now we will talk about the ingester. Why ingest? Because ingest is usually the name that you um, try to put something somewhere. Um, in, in a nutshell, it sends and cutted videos to archive. And this archive is then used by Judo TV, Tagger, and other IGF platforms. It's really important even more and more like to have really good archive. And obviously to, to use ingester because it, it ingests all the videos to the internet, you need a good internet. So try to think that you would need to, for example, for four tatamis, you would need around 100 megabits per second to upload all the fights in real time. So what it can also do is to actually upload after events is finished. So this is also used now in some AGU competition and some of the some of those in even in Slovenia. So you just need to have a recorder and packet sender, and then it can, of course, upload them. I mean, it needs to first cut them. It can cut them even after the event is finished, and then it can up upload them um, at home. Um, what's really important is that. 
the way how it works is in tandem with the cutter that both of them are um, targeting the same watch folder. And watch folder is the term that is actually uh, one folder that video ingester is checking every, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds. And immediately when it detects that there's a new file and that it was finished, it starts to upload it. Uh, now we did a couple of improvements in the video ingester and it can automatically show you the speed that it's currently. It's here, not, not in this screen, but it will show you the, the upload speed. And on the left side, it's actually how, what is the status of the uploading. So if you have, I don't know, 200 jobs and, you know, you can then do the basic calculations, how long it will need. And now back to maybe myself, actually. I thought that Tanya will say this one, but she pointed at me. Um, so we would now like to move to the graphics. And now actually Europe will take over. So hello also from my side. Uh, the graphics is a very simple program uh, which ex actually shows you a lot of things. So basically it's using that uh, when you are streaming, you overlay the graphic uh, per each tatami. And uh, how it's made, currently we use two softwares for that. One is the server, which act, actually act like a rendering machine. But server itself, uh, it has uh, two functions. First, it's receiving the commands from the dedicated software, and it's rendering all the information over the stream. The rendering can be either to the uh, NDI, and NDI is uh, then use in the OBS, like overlay or in some other streaming software, or it can be used uh, for some hardware cards like Blackmagic, Magwell and so on. When is this usable? For instance, if you will have some big competition with some local broadcaster who wants to have TV uh, broadcast, and then you can just uh, configure this server uh, that they will have they will get the signal to their ob of each of the graphics so the software itself it's running that it uh, has one is instance per one tatami itself and it's getting the information over the network and uh, to getting the information it it needs the packet sender so it's receiving this, the UDP packets from the packet sender and it's uh, sending the commands to the server that it's overlaying uh, all the graphics itself. Uh, furthermore, the newer versions have also the, some final graphics which are not triggered automatically but it's triggered manually and those graphics are uh, for the medal ceremony and uh, the final uh, the final medals so that's all what it's on the graphics hi i'm back <laughs> so uh, we discussed shortly about um sorry uh, we discussed shortly about the judo base Judo Manager, the competition running software, function of the packet sender, uh, fair replay, cutting, uploading, uh, uploading to cloud video storage, uh, and graphics. So what I want to talk about now is this uh, tagging. So uh, what is tagger? So Tagger is a system for uh, uh, contest analysis. So what we get here is we get this video. This is a video that was cut and uploaded to the system. Here we get the uh, events from the competition. So every score, 
um, every event on the scoreboard is registered here, and we also have time stamp from the packet sender. So this is what we get inside the system. So basically, all the events are approximately at the time that they happen. Usually, it takes a few seconds for the uh, referee to announce the action and for the scoreboard operators to set the event. But sometimes, you know, there can be mistakes or the uh, referee decision can be later. So what we do in this tagger, we uh, correct these mistakes and then we also add uh, here. You see you have Shido non competitivity so we add the reason for the Shido and we add the techniques that were used um, in this event. What we also have is doctor call, so if a doctor comes to the mat and we also tag, you see here on the top, we also tag scoreboard mistakes. So we have um, mistakes on the scoreboard. So this is done for all IGF events and a lot of EU events that uh, have videos. Um, what we get from this? So we get, um, first thing, this is linked to other IGF sites. So IGF.org, Judobase, uh, Judo IGF org, uh, and Judo TV. So if you go to Judo TV and you open a contest, you will see the data from this uh, contest order underneath, and you can click directly to the epon, and it will put you usually five seconds before the action starts, so you can easily watch only the actions. Uh, what it also offers us is to have statistics. So to have scores, techniques, uh, time that was required to do something, doctor calls, scoreboard mistakes. Um, and we also have data that we can, can create video highlights. So this is, this is what we do for uh, every IGF event. Um, here is just some examples of where you can get this data. So if you go to um, Judo Base, not is what I was talking at the start, we have uh, some names repeat themselves. But to, this judo base is available to everyone to watch. Um, if you want to watch videos, you have to have a sub subscription. But anyone that wants to have a sub subscription can go here. To the other judo base, the administration data, only the people who um, are allowed to have, so national administrations and IGF and uh, continental administrations have the access. So here you can, all this data that was tagged, for example, here is the Paris Grand Slam. So you see here at the bottom, you have a scoreboard result, and here you click on the contest, and it will sh um, show you directly the result. The other side uh, that is not so well known, um, I'm not sure why, but I think it's a good one, is uh, Judo IGF Org. So here you can browse the techniques. Uh, here on top, you see Nage Vaza, Katame Vaza. So you have uh, videos of all the techniques that were filmed by Kotokan. So there are Kotokan S experts showing uh, basic techniques. But then you have also link to these contest uh, examples of these techniques. So every technique that was tagged, for example, every Uchimata that was tagged, is shown here on the site. So I think this is a really good tool for competitors and coaches to browse through and then you can just select a competitor and it will show you all the techniques that this competitor has done on competition and so on. So this is already available for everyone with a subscri subscription. Um, and then we have also example of um, statistics that we already get from one competition. So here you can see average contest time, then you have positive scores, negative scores, Fusengachi, Kikengachi, then the techniques, uh, so Nagevaza scores, Nagevaza epons. There is a lot of more, um, um, more statistics. This is just some small example of what can be presented um, with this analysis. So this is basically why we are doing this. <laughs> you know.
So why we want to have uh, these videos, why we want to have recording and cutting, so we can um, get all the statistics. So I will just like short summary. So what is the aim of all the system, the whole system? So first thing is smooth organization of the event in the sport, sport hall. So this is basics. You need to have a smooth um, event running. So we um, provide the software to um, have a smooth organization of the event. So all the necessary features that need to be in the sport hall. So the other thing of this system is um, data flow is automatic. So there is no need for exports, imports. Like you have to export something from the program and import it somewhere else. So uh, what you can do with this system, you can uh, uh, synchronize data, send data online. You don't need any interventions, only in case of uh, some mistakes. But even then, you can correct. For example, before, if there was a mistake on the scoreboard, wrong winner, you corrected locally in Ipon, and then we also had to correct in uh, Judo base because we got the wrong data from the packet center. Now, if you correct uh, it's a wrong competition, competitor winner on the scoreboard, you know you correct this data in the server, and this will correct also the data in the Judo base. So um, all, all is done automatic. So not no need for interventions. Um, the next thing what we want to have is um, data collection for analysis. So with the, um, the whole system, with the tagging, with the videos, um, we believe we have a lot of data that can be used by commissions, organizers, coaches, competitors that can be used for research and so on. So this is, this is what um, is one of the aims of the whole system. Um, and the other thing that we think also is very important is uh, presentation of judo. So we want to offer um, uh, everyone a possibility to have a good um, presentation of judo because we want to see champions, we want to see Teddy Riner and so on, but uh, locally, you know, parents, grandparents, coaches, uh, um, uh, other judoka in the club often want to see someone compete in the local uh, competition, on cadets and juniors. This is what, what they also want to see. And with this system, we can have a good presentation for everyone who is competing. You know, cadets uh, competitions are more often the most uh, competitions with most competitors. And we can create easily create highlights, video stream, contest videos with this system. Because the cutting is automatic. Uh, the uploading is automatic, so basically you have to monitor the system. You don't need a person there to do it uh, manually. And uh, if there is, if the competitions are, or the contests are also tech, it's really easy to get uh, actions for highlights and so on. So what we want to have, the future development, this is near future, not far future, <laughs> because we are already working on this. What we want to have is uh, to be possible for um, participants or fans to get contest videos or um, action videos on demand. So, for example, you have a, you want to make a presentation for a sponsor or just in a club, and you want to have you know best highlights of one competitor, and it's really easy to get. You know, you can just, uh, I want to have epons from this competitor and if the contest is tagged, it, it, can, it can be easily provided uh, to get it. And also for uh, organizer, you know, I want to have all highlights from the competition to make sponsors interested or, um, you know, local community or the uh, local authority, the city to have a good presentation and to promote to get some more funding. This can be done with uh, this sort of data collection. So this is this is the aim of why we want to um, promote uh, everyone to use as many features um, as possible in the system. Because if you use the whole system, there are possibilities to to develop. And also, 
you know, we now take IGF competitions and uh, some of the EU competitions, but it is possible to create this tagger system. So, for example, in the, you have ded dedicated people to tag uh, in uh, Pan America, in Africa, and you know you can do it your, yourself uh, with the system. It's not necessary to for one of us to do it here. It just uh, needs to be a qualified person with a you know judo knowledge, so he knows how to tag uh, all the events. And there is also, uh, now we started tagging these events ourselves, Be before that Kodokan was doing this, but we have an arrangement that with the difficult techniques, you know, not so sure techniques, Kodokan is the one who makes the, the decision. You know, sometimes it's difficult to say um, this technique is this, so we send this to Kodokan and they make the final decisions for the, the difficult cases. So this is basic presentation of the the uh, whole system. Um, so for this first webinar, we wanted to present this. Um, and now for the future webinars, so we said that maybe it's good to have more webinars at the start to get, um, you know, some more information at the beginning and later on, um, for sure, we won't be doing this every week, but now to give you as many informations as possible in a short time. We want to do it every week. So for the next week, we want to show you a Judo Manager desktop. So we will prepare one competition and go, you know, all the steps, what you need to do, how you need to proceed, to uh, which settings are important and so on. And then on um, 21st of February, Ferry play, competition setup, so what are the settings, how to connect everything. Um, and then um, the last uh, webinar in February, we want to go in detail with the uh, Juno Manager desktop working with contest order, because this is basically what uh, uh, you do over the competition. So everything that is done in a contest order, so we can go more into the detail how to work with the program. And later on, we will also, um, on every webinar at the end, we will show you what the future webinars will be, so you can, you know, take your time and um, maybe also ask some question in advance, like you did for today's um, webinar.